Welcome in to New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, and I want to give a shout out to Aura, an all-in-one digital safety tool for sponsoring today's show. And you can get started with them with a 14-day free trial. Just go to Aura.com slash Chat Sports. I'll have the link to that in the comment section and description of this video. Look, we do more online now than ever. You want to protect yourself, protect your information, and protect your family. Aura will hook you up with a 14-day free trial. Just go to Aura.com slash Chat Sports. We'll tell you more about them throughout today's show. But in today's show, we're going to talk about the latest Giants news and rumors, some mini camp takeaways. I'm going to save my winners and losers video for following day three of Giants mini camp, excuse me. But let's start the show with this. We like to do this. Shout out your city in the comments section. My favorite thing about Giants now in chat sports is we have viewers all over the world, coast to coast. Doesn't matter where you are. And look, as Giants fans, we are all over the world. I love that. So. Let me know where you're watching from. I'll give shout outs to everybody. Shout out to Superman26, first commenter of today's live show. He's in the chat getting it ready. That's my guy, Superman26. The Hammy as well. He said NYG. I asked you guys to type NYG in the comment section if you're ready for the show. My guy, Superman, and my guy, Hammy, they answered the bell. Shout out to you guys. You guys are real ones. My guy, Micro Mike, the best Lions damn YouTuber there is. What's going on, Brody? I think the other day on Twitter, I saw you without a hat, and I was like, who the hell is that? But it was my guy, Micro Mike. We got Whoville from L.A. Superman says, you know it. King Wolf's in the chat. My guy, he's typing NYG. Tony B, the regulars, the real ones are always coming into the show. We got Tony B, Superman, Ryan, King Wolf. Antoine says, yes, sir, I'm here, New Haven, Connecticut. I'm here to ask some questions, Marshall. I'm on you today. Come at me. Look, if you want to be a part of the Giants mailbags we're going to get to, Antoine, if I'm saying it wrong, let me know. Use hashtag Giants in the comment section, and I'll get you on the show. Class Clown is from Scrooston, Texas. Shout out H-Town, ride or die, 713-281-832. Tony B's from Long Island. That's where I was born. What's up, Tony? Superman's from Jacksonville, Florida. And King Wolf is from Bergen County. We'll keep letting you guys shout out your city in the comment section. Stand up and rep your hometown. But I also want to ask you this question. I think this is a good one, and it's a tough one. Honestly, I don't even know where I would side on this. I'd type 75, you know, so both these guys would be good. But let me know, who do you think is going to have a bigger impact in the rookie year for the Giants? Is it going to be Evan Neal on the offensive line, or is it going to be Kayvon Thibodeau as a pass rusher? Get your votes in. I'm always curious, and I love hearing from other Giants fans about their opinions. Because, look, I'm up here talking by myself all day, but I love to go back in the comment section and see where you guys stand. Because, look, this is a two-way conversation, a two-way street. I couldn't do this show without you guys. So let me know. Who do you think is going to have a bigger impact as a rookie this year for the Giants? Type 70 for Evan Neal, his jersey number, and you can type 5 for King K. K. Von Thibodeau. Juan, he's, Juan is watching from the Dominican Republic. What's up, bro? And Tone. All right, I got you. And Tone. Appreciate you. Superman's from the Bronx, though. King Wolf says Kayvon. Tony B says Evan Neal. Christian Vanderfeen, my guy. What's up, bro? He's watching. He says Evan Neal. And Tone says Evan Neal. Superman26 says Kayvon Thibodeau. Class Clown says uh, Evan Neal. SNL Slimeball says Kayvon Thibodeau. King Wolf says that Evan Neal wishes he got number 73. Yeah, that's what he wore in college, but look, new days, new beginnings. He's going to rock 70. The Hammy, he says 70. And the Herbalist says NYC G-Unit, shout out to 50 Cent. Another question I have for you guys, and I'll set the stage a little bit. Sterling Shepard, Kadarius Toney, and Kenny Galladay have been wearing red non-contact practice jerseys throughout all of the Giants offseason workouts, OTAs, mini camp workouts they haven't been participating in team drills and live drills and contact drills and i'm kind of concerned because the starting receivers yesterday to go with daniel jones were richie james and cj board i have a problem with that this is a do or die year for daniel jones and if he's not able to get the reps and the chemistry and the camaraderie with guys like Kadarius tony kenny galladay and sterling shepherd you can't just turn it on in the nfl once week one gets here you got to be out there you got to get the reps these reps are limited, and that shows you how important they are. So scale it from 1 to 10. How concerned you are about the Giants playmakers missing offseason practices? I'm at about a 7. I'm going to be honest, because if you go look at last year, the Giants, they ended their year 
with a terrible group of wide receivers. Their main guys got hurt. They had a lot of guys that had to step up that weren't ready for that. So I'm concerned, and I'm concerned that might happen again this year. <coughs> <clears throat> the hammy says two. Chunky says four. King Wolf says four. Antone says four. Class Count Clown says five. Superman says sign OBJ. We've talked about that a couple times. As much as I love OBJ to be here, I don't think that's going to happen. Next question. Speaking of OBJ, maybe you want to sign him. Should the Giants sign another wide receiver? Because, look, these guys are missing practice. Richie James, C.J. Board, those are your starting wide receivers right now. Darius Slayton has been regulated to the second team. He can't even start over guys like C.J. Board and Rick, Richie James. I will say it right now. I don't think Darius Slayton will make the Giants' 53-man roster. Or if it doesn't get that far, I believe he's going to get traded. But type S for sign if you think the Giants should go out and sign another receiver. Or if you think they're good with where they are, with the group of receivers they have, you can go down in the comment section and type P. Class Clown. Yeah, I don't think Odell Beckham Jr. is coming back to New York. Maybe to end his career, but it it sounds like, you know, it, it was just kind of a nasty, nasty divorce with OBJ and the Giants. And that's sad because we all love OBJ if you're a real Giants fan. Over 32 in the chat. Everyone hit the damn thumbs up. Shout out to Jersey Life 86 He's right. Look, if you haven't liked today's video, go and do that right now. The Hammy, he says sign. Whoville Cash, what up, says sign. David L. says sign. Supreme Superman, excuse me, says sign. Vandy says sign. It was just, it was just wishing thumbs up. All right, I got it. Another question. I mean, this one's kind of random, but what are your thoughts on Tiki Barber? We know with the Giants, he had a legendary career. If you go look at his stats, the first couple years in the NFL, a lot of fumbles, inconsistent. But the last five years of his career, he was one of the best backs in the NFL. But this is my problem. When he became a sports broadcaster, when he went to NBC and did the Sunday night football show, I felt like he became somewhat of a Giants hater. He said some bad things about Eli Manning. He said some bad things about the Giants organization. I viewed him as a hater, and for that, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way, and I wasn't, you know, so much of a fan as his, and it kind of made his playing career irrelevant because your voice and your words are sometimes the most powerful thing you can use. And Tiki Barber, he was unfair to the Giants. He was unfair to Eli Manning. So let me know your thoughts on Tiki Barber. King Wolf says a legend, no doubt about it. One of the best Giants running backs ever. Superman says wishy-washy. Class Clown says his criticism is unfair. Tony says I hated him for years after he talked junk about Eli, but I'm over it. Tony, I'd want to be over it. I don't like to hold grudges, but look, Eli Manning, probably my favorite Giants football player ever. And the way he spoke about him, that's not what's up. Yeah, Superman, he said not my quarterback, Eli. Class Clown says he loved him as a player. I did too, and we'll show you some stats later on in today's show. But I told you guys off the top of the show about Aura, an all-in-one digital safety tool to help you protect yourself and your family online. They offer financial fraud protection, identity theft protection online, as well as device security and family plans to protect five people. And you can start it with a 14-day free trial. Just go to Aura.com slash chat sports. If you haven't got started today, what are you waiting for? It's free. You can cancel at any time. Look, we do more online now than ever, and you don't want your identity stolen. You don't want someone hacking into your bank or your credit cards. Trust me, that's a long process. Aura, they'll protect you and they'll take care of you. Get started today. Aura.com slash chat sports. We also have two mailbags to get to. I will be answering your guys' questions live. It's honestly my favorite thing to do. I love chopping it up with other Giants fans, and I love, you know, just – Hearing from you guys, because look, there's not a lot of Giants fans here in Dallas, Texas, so I don't get to talk Giants football with anybody but myself, but these mailbags, we get to do that. If you want your question in today's show, use hashtag Giants in the comment section. You can get your comments going right now. You can drop your questions in the comment section right now. Just make sure you use hashtag Giants, all one hashtag. No space in between the number sign, the pound sign, or the hashtag, and then Giants. You know, that's... I don't know why they do that, Petey. They always put a space there, but it's weird. Just hashtag Giants, or you can super chat to get on today's show. Every super chat guarantees you to be a part of the show, and we'll do some drinking for every super chat that we get. We got 53 people watching and 22 likes. If you're ready for the real show to talk about 
the latest Giants news, latest Giants rumors, some mini camp takeaways, as well as free agent targets like this video. I want to get to 35 likes. We're 13 likes away, and my producer's telling me in my ear, we will not start the show until we get to 35 likes. Maybe that means I get to go home early. I got some things I could do at the house. And look, I love talking Giants football, but if no one's excited about it, I'm not going to be excited about it. So go right now, hit that like button, like today's video, because the more likes we get, YouTube is going to push this to more Giants fans. And look, we want more Giants fans here on Giants now because we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. So if you're ready for today's show, go and hit that like button because this is what we're talking about. Free agent targets. The Giants, we have their updated salary cap number that we'll break down on today's show. And we got four guys that I think the Giants could benefit from taking a look at, making a call, and seeing if they'd be willing to take a one-year veteran minimum deal to join this squad. And then we got two Q&As to get to. We told you a second ago, Look, here at Giants Now by Chat Sports, we pride ourselves on being the most interactive Giants YouTube channel out there. And the Q&As and mailbags is a large part to do with that. So help me be able to get these mailbags done. Drop your questions in the comment section. Use hashtag Giants so our software can get it up there. If you put a question in there, there's a chance you'll be a part of the show. Your question will be on screen, your username, your profile picture, and then I'll be able to ask you or answer your guys' questions. So if you haven't yet, drop a question in the comment section like my guy King Wolf did. He said, would OBJ want to come back? There's a new regime and no Gettleman. Maybe fix the bridge. I'll make sure that my producer gets to that one on this mailbag. Tony B, he also dropped a question. So let's do it. If you haven't yet, Go down right now and hit that like button because we're about to get into a Giants Rumors mailbag right now. What's going on, guys? Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, and we're about to get into a Giants Rumors mailbag, which aired on our live show. We go live every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you're, so you're a subscriber and have your notifications turned on so you can join the party. And I also want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Aura. You can get started with them today for free at Aura.com slash chat sports. They're an all-in-one digital safety tool to help you protect yourself, your family members, and your identity online. You can get started today for free. 14-day trial, Aura.com slash chat sports. My guy, King Wolf, what up, bro? He asks, would you would OBJ want to come back? There's a new regime and no Gettleman. Maybe fix the bridge. Hashtag bring back 13. That's what I'm talking about. Look, I love Odell Beckham. I love what he did with the Giants for the five or six years he was here. He's arguably the best Giants receiver of all time. Some people will say Imani Toomer for the playoff success he had. But nobody got the fans out of their seats like Odell Beckham did when he was wearing that number 13 jersey for the New York Giants. I would love to see him back. But I think we have to face the facts. Odell Beckham is not going to come back to the Giants this year. He probably won't even be ready to play until the earliest November, December. He tore his ACL in early February, and that's a 9- to 12-month injury. He, hurt his, he tore his ACL the first time, and he was out for 11 to 12 months. Supposedly this surgery went better, but I suspect OBJ won't sign until the middle of the season, and he's going to look at the landscape of the NFL and say, which team can give me the best chance to get back to the Super Bowl and compete? Or maybe he just may go ahead and re-sign with the Rams. But I hope one day, maybe it's the last year of his career, Odell Beckham will once again play for the New York Giants. I appreciate you, King Wolf. Tony B., another faithful subscriber to the channel. What's going on, bro? How scared are you with our lack of experience at the cornerback position? Honestly, I'm very scared. There's a lot of young players on this team. After you lost James Bradbury by cutting him, to save a lot of money, $10.2 million. Your number one corner is Adore Jackson, who played really well down the stretch of the 2021 NFL season. But outside of Adore Jackson, there's question marks. I like Aaron Robinson, but is he ready to be a full-time starting outside corner? Is Radarius Williams ready to step up if an injury happens? Can Darnay Holmes hold down that slot position? Will Cordell Flott flash as a rookie? There's a lot of young and unproven players on this Giants quarterback depth chart, and that concerns me in an era of the NFL where people like to throw the ball 30 to 45 times. So to be honest with you, I'm concerned, but I'm also looking forward to the young guys having an opportunity to show off their talents and what they can be in the NFL. Albert O, my guy, 
Daniel Jones is one of the best deep throwers in the NFL. Should the Giants sign Deshaun Jackson? All right, I'll break down the first part. Daniel Jones throws a great deep ball. We know that J Daniel Jones has had the most success when he's been able to throw it deep and uncork the deep ball. He's had success his rookie year with Darius Slayton, who had eight touchdowns. So I don't mind the idea of adding a deep threat because Deshaun Jackson is one of the best to ever do it when it comes to being a deep threat in the National Football League. I mean, just look at the stats on screen. He has the most touchdowns of 60-plus yards in NFL history. And the same for 80-plus yard touchdowns. He had 26 touchdowns on more than 60 yards, and he has five touchdowns on more than 80 yards to go along with guys like Jerry Rice, the best receiver in NFL history. But to be honest with you, I effing hate Deshaun Jackson. I cannot stand him. Great player. Good, good football player. He has a cool rapper that rapped against Lil Snoop. Shout out to him and Meek Mill. But I am not a fan of Deshaun Jackson. The way that he has just terrorized the Giants year after year, I still can't get over the play where he dropped the punt, picked it up, took it to the house. The miracle at the Meadowlands ran across the goal line as the Giants punter had no chance to bring him down. But look, this show, it's not all about me. I want to take the pulse of all Giants fans right now. If you had to pick one deep threat to sign an NFL free agency, who would it be? Would you be down to bring John Ross back? He's still a free agent. The Giants have not re-signed him. Type JR in the comment section. Or if you want to bring Deshaun Jackson, the NFC East killer, to the Meadowlands, you can go ahead in the comment section and type DJ. If you haven't yet, or you just were waiting, I don't know what you're doing. Go down right now. Hit that big red button. Subscribe to us here on New York Giants Now by Chat Sports because we offer free daily videos on the latest Giants news and rumors. We go live on Wednesday. We do mailbags where we interact with the audience, and I promise our coverage and how many videos we get to do on this channel is only going to continue to go up because so does our subscriber count. So if you love the Giants and you're looking for another place to get Giants news and rumors content, lock us in right here, youtube.com slash TV. Or just go down right now, hit that big red button. Pierre, what up, bro? Who would be the best starting tight end? Outside of corners, tight end is another position that I'm concerned about. I like the guys we have on the roster, and Ricky Seals-Jones, uh, Jordan Akins, the rookie, Daniel Bellinger. But at the end of the, end of the day, none of those guys have proven to be starting caliber tight ends in the NFL. We've heard a lot about Daniel Bellinger in OTAs and minicamp, getting reps with the ones. He's looked good. He's displayed the soft hands. He wasn't asked to be a receiving threat in the college game last year, but he showed so far with the Giants coaches that he can do that. Do I expect a fourth-round rookie tight end to come and be a starter right away? No. I do have a high ceiling for him. I do have some big expectations for him. But I do think maybe week one, Ricky Seals-Jones is going to be the starter. But through the end of the year, down the stretch, I'm expecting Daniel Bellinger to take over and be the tight end one for the Giants. To answer your question, Pierre, I appreciate it. Brandon Lee, what up, Brody? Is there a strong possibility Taylor will start the season over Jones? No, there is absolutely zero chance that Tyrod Taylor will start week one of the NFL season for the New York football Giants if Daniel Jones is healthy. If Daniel Jones gets hurt, then yes, but no way, shape, or form will Tyrod Taylor be the week one starter for the Giants. I like Tyrod Taylor as a backup and only as a backup. If he has to come in and play because Daniel Jones is hurt, fine, but Daniel Jones should be able to start every game of this season because this is his last chance to prove to himself, to me, to you, and the Giants organization that he can be a good starting quarterback in the NFL. Shout out to Aura, today's sponsor. We told you about the top of the show. Look, you do more online now than ever before. And Aura does more to keep you safe. So get started with them at Aura.com slash chat sports. Cause look, they offer financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, online and device security. And if you got a family and you got some little ones, they have family plans to protect five people. They're you, the day and age of the scammers and the hackers are through the roof. And you wanna make sure you're protected online with your card, with your bank, with all that good stuff. So get started today with Aura at Aura.com slash chat sports. 14-day free trial that you, can get can that you can cancel at any time. So get started with them today, Aura.com slash chat sports. Ronnie H., do you think David Sills makes the roster? Hashtag Sills Army. Hashtag Giants. I do not think that David Sills will make the Giants 53-man roster. But I do think he's going to have a chance in the preseason 
to show his worth. We know that David Sills and Daniel Jones are best friends off the field. David Sills is a preseason legend. Last year, the Sills army was out in full force. I like what he can do as a receiver, but the Giants right now already have four wide receivers that are locked into this roster. And Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard, Kadarius Toney, and Wandale Robinson. And then C.J. Board is a special teams player that the Giants highly value. So that's five wide receivers already that are on this roster. In that last spot, you're going to have guys competing. Like Richie James, who's looked really well in minicamp. In day one of minicamp, he had the most targets and catches. You have Darius Slayton. You have Robert Foster. You have Colin Johnson. None of those guys are sexy names, but they're all going to be, be competing with David Sills to be the sixth wide receiver on this roster. I don't expect the Giants to keep more than six wide receivers. But I'll leave it up to you guys. I know David Sills has a lot of fans in this Giants fan base, so I'll let you voice your thoughts right now. Should David Sills make the Giants 53-man roster? Let me know. Type Y for yes, or you can go down and type N for no. Superman 2-6, what up, bro? Giants, I'd love to see Jimmy Smith get signed so we can lock up the corners. Do you think that would work? Get better, Marshall. Are you telling me to get better or the Giants cornerback room? Yes, I did. I was sick last week, if that's what you're talking about. Thank you for the kind words. But the Giants cornerback room has to get better. I like Jimmy Smith for the fact that he's played in Wink Martindale's system for the past couple of years. He knows what that system is like inside and out. And like we talked about, the Giants have a lot of young corners that are inexperienced on this team. So Jimmy Smith would be able to help a guy like Aaron Robinson get used to this system. Rodarius Williams get used to this system. Cordell Flott get used to this system. I don't think Jimmy Smith is a starting level or starting caliber player in the NFL anymore, but I think he can come to the Giants, add some veteran veteranship, add some leadership, and be a big brother to these younger corners. But him being a starter on this team, I think those day, the day and age of Jimmy Smith being a starter in the NFL is most likely done, but I don't hate the idea of the Giants signing him. Appreciate it, Superman. Mr. NY Stadium, I was wondering where you're at, bro. You're always in on these live shows. I appreciate you. How many touchdowns do you think Daniel Jones will make this coming season? I always go back to this. In 12 games that Daniel Jones started, in his rookie year, he threw 24 touchdowns. That was under Pat Shermer, where Pat Shermer let Daniel Jones drop, drop back and be somewhat of a gunslinger. That's who he is. At Duke, he threw the ball over the field. He liked to take chances. He can make the big-time throws. But then Jason Garrett came in and made him a chuck down, uh, check down Charlie. He made him take the first read. He often told him who to throw it to. So Daniel Jones became glued to his first read. But I expect that to change as Brian Dable and Mike Kafka have come in and have said that we want Daniel Jones to be aggressive, to throw the ball downfield, to take chances. So if he threw 24 touchdowns in his rookie year in 12 games, 17 games now, can we get 30 touchdowns from Daniel Jones. Is that a little bit ambitious? Sure, but I think that's a very fair benchmark to set. So let's go with 30 over or under. I think it'd be right around there. If he does meet that quota, I think it'd be a solid year for Danny Dimes. Appreciate you, Mr. NY. Sandman, 34. Do you think Cordell Flott could start for the Giants? He's going to be in a cornerback room where it's going to be an opportunity for him to compete. The slot corner role right now is up in the air. It's going to be between him and and Darnay Holmes. I like Darnay Holmes a good bit as a player. He has a little bit more experience. He's been in the NFL. He knows what it takes to be a starter in the NFL. But I'm a big fan of Cordell Flott. I think he has a higher ceiling than a guy like Darnay Holmes. He's longer. He's six foot one, almost 200 pounds. Started the last two seasons for the LSU Tigers and the SEC. So I definitely think Cordell Flott is going to have a chance to be a starter for the Giants this year. Anytime you're picked in the third round of the NFL draft, you're not expected to be a starter in year one, but you're damn sure going to have the chance to do so. And with the lack of bodies and honestly elite talent that this Giants secondary has, Flott is going to have a chance to come in and take over that starting slot corner role. I'd be pumped if he did, because that would mean the Giants got a starting corner in the third round of the NFL draft. But let's show the rookie some love. Because look, he's looked good in OTAs. He's looked good in minicamp. And look, the Giants are going to be better if Cordell Flott is better. So let's spam number 28, his jersey number, in the comment section. Let's get the good vibes going around Cordell Flott. If you want him to be the best rookie in the NFL next season, type number 28 in the comment section. Spam 28 in the comment section because look, 
we need it's time for the Giants to have rookies to come in and be contributors right away. In the Dave Gettleman era, that wasn't a thing. In the Joe Shane era, I hope that changes. I hope the Giants get impact plays from young guys on this roster. I'll give a shout out to everybody that types number 28. Prog Drummer, PSY Guy, King Wolf, Jersey Life, Caesar, The Hammy, Mr. NY Stadium, Jersey Life, Pierre Juan, Mike Francis. What up, Mike Francis? That's my guy. I appreciate your uh, super thanks the other day. I was going to bring it up in tomorrow's Giants mini camp winners and losers, so don't think I forgot about you, Mike. Alzo, my guy. What's going on, bro? One of the realest in the game. Jessica, Uriel, I think I said that right, 28. What about this? Uh, we'll get to that in a second. That's a, that's, you're right. You're right. Thank you, Petey. I was getting ahead of myself. I got a good question for you guys in a second. Alex types 28. King Wolf says Aura, protect the kiddos. That's right, King Wolf. You don't only protect yourself with Aura. You protect your kiddos. And in the day and age we live in, we got to protect our kids, protect the youth, protect the future. Mike Francis hitting them with the dab. All righty. Class Clown Ent Entertainment. Class Clown. He asked a question that we missed. We'll get that question, Class Clown, in the next Giants mailbag. But look, we're going to break down the Giants' latest news and rumors and some free agency targets as the Giants finally have some cap space they can use. So without further ado, let's get to it. Before we get into today's Giants and uh, NFL free agency targets, I want to ask you guys this question. Who was a better giant with their time with Big Blue? Was it Justin Tuck or was it OCU Minora? Type number 91 in the comments section if you're riding with Justin Tuck or if you think OC is the guy that was the better edge rusher, go down and type 72. Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, and I want to give a shout out to today's presenting sponsor, Aura, an all-in-one digital safety tool that will help yourself as well as your family members stay protected online because we do more online than ever and Aura is going to do more online do more to help you protect yourself online they're offering a 14-day free trial for all New York Giants fans get started today Aura.com slash chat sports I'll have the link to that in the comments section and description of this video and we'll break it down more later in the show but let's get today's show started as we're going to look at some free agency targets. So I think it's key to bring this up. The Giants currently have about $6.5 million in cap space. But Wandale Robinson, Daniel Bellinger, and Dane Belton are all unsigned, which is going to cost the Giants roughly $815,000. So they would have about $5.8 or $5.7 million in cap space, which is plenty of enough money to go and get a good player, in NFL free agency. So could the Giants go out and look to sign another player? There's some positions at minicamp that are low in numbers, and there's been a lot of injuries out there. And that's why the Giants, Art Stapleton broke it down, are circling back and giving tryouts to wide receivers at Giants minicamp. He said this, my understanding is that wide receivers Isaiah Ford and Keelan Doss are participating in Giants minicamp on a tryout basis. Initially, the thought was they had signed them, but that proved to not be the case yet. Clearly, Joe Shane, Brian Dable are concerned about this wide receiver core because Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard, and Kadarius Toney are wearing red non-contact jerseys. So they're having to ask guys to try out to just get through the drills and have Daniel Jones and Tyrod Taylor, as well as Davis Webb, have people to be able to throw the football to. So I'll ask you this question, and I'll give you four guys I think the Giants could look at to sign in free agency that would help them. But do the Giants need to sign another player? Are you happy with the way the roster sits right now, or do you think they need to go out and sign a player to be able to compete in the NFC East this year? Maybe you think the Kayvon Thibodeau and Evan Neal pick have expedited this retool or rebuild job. But sound off for me. Type Y for yes, or you can go down and type N for no. When I thought about this and the fact that the Giants are trying out Keelan Doss and Isaiah Ford, what about bringing in Emmanuel Sanders, a veteran that last year spent time with the Buffalo Bills? So he has a relationship with Joe Shane. He has a relationship with Brian Dable. He has a relationship with the quarterback coach, Shea Tierney. He has a relationship with the offensive line coach, Bobby Johnson. To be honest, I'm concerned about the health of the wide receivers. We have seen time and time again that Daniel Jones has not been surrounded by the most talent, and it's been tough for him or tougher than it should be to succeed as the franchise's quarterback. 
I mean, the fact that C.J. Board, David Sills, and Richie James are the three starting wide receivers at Giants minicamp is a problem. And look, these offseason reps, you can say what you want about them, but they're important. And the fact is that Sterling Shepard, Kadarius Toney, and Kenny Galladay have all been partial participants. They are wearing these red non-contact jerseys. They are participating in live drills. So Daniel Jones hasn't had the ability to build up the chemistry with Kenny Galladay. He didn't do it last year with Galladay. He didn't do it last year with Kadarius Toney. He has chemistry with Sterling Shepard, but you need to get these guys on the field. It's already June. July's right around the corner, and so is the NFL season. And if you go into another season with Daniel Jones, with a wide receiver core that's hurt and bruised up, that's going to be a problem. I think the Giants need to go out and sign a wide receiver, whether it's Emmanuel Sanders or Cole Beasley or one wide receiver out there. You can't go into another season where you know Kenny Galladay has injury issues. Sterling Shepard, he's a concussion away from having to retire. Kadarius Toney has had injury issues. Darius Slayton has been running with the second team in Giants minicamp. So you have three wide receivers in Tony Galladay and Shepard that have injury concerns. Is Wandale Robinson going to have to be the Giants' number one wide receiver at this point? That's con concerning. And the thing is, although Emmanuel Sanders is a little bit old and Father Time is tugging on the back of his jersey a little bit, he's still a damn good football player. Last year, 42 receptions, 626 yards, and he is still a burner. He can still run right by you, and that's why he averaged 15 yards per catch last year. And he also had four touchdowns. He also knows this system. So this isn't going to be an accusation where the Giants are trying out a guy that has no chemistry or no understanding of the system Brian Dable wants to implement. He knows the system. He knows the team. He knows the head coach. He knows the guys that are running the show. And I think any time you can add a veteran that's still productive to a young wide receiver core that has injury issues, why the hell not? Maybe it's not Emmanuel Sanders that you want. Maybe it's Cole Beasley. Maybe it's Julio Jones. Maybe it's someone else. Let me know, though. Should the Giants sign a wide receiver? Do they need to add another body to this wide receiver depth chart? Let me know. Type S for sign if you're like, I'm cool with the guys. I want the young guys to play. I don't agree with that. But look, I don't have to agree with everything you guys say. So type P for pass if you think the Giants are good with their current wide receiver depth chart. Another player that I thought the Giants could look at, and I don't know if the Giants will go out and sign any of these guys, but I think all four of them could be able to contribute right away. What about Trey Flowers, the defensive lineman of the Detroit Lions? He's most notably known for playing for the New England Patriots, and the reason I like Flowers the most is he can line up anywhere on the Giants defensive line. He can line up on the edge. He can line up as the three technique or the five technique. And that's why he was so successful with Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. Right now, your bookend edge rushers, Kayvon Thibodeau and Aziz Ojolari, that's not changing. Then you got Leonard Williams and Sexy Dexy. That ain't changing. But outside of that, there's a lot of question marks. I like Quincy Roche, what he did at the end of the season after coming over from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I also like Ellerson Smith. He's popped a little bit in Giants OTAs and minicamp. But the fact is, if you can get the 2019 and 2018 version of Trey Flowers on a veteran minimum deal, that would be a steal for this team. The last couple of years, he's dealt with the injury bug. Just played in 14 games in the last two years. But he's only 29 years old. This isn't a guy that's old, long in the tooth, and is ready to retire. He still has some juice to give to this game. And if you can get a guy to come in, give you four or five sacks, a couple tackles for losses on the edge on a veteran minimum deal, I would be all in for signing Trey Flowers if the dollars are right for the New York Giants. Also, Aura, today's presenting sponsor, you can get started with them at Aura.com slash chat sports. They offer financial fraud protection, identity theft protection, as well as online and device security. And they're offering a 14-day free trial to protect you and family plans of up to five people. So get started with them today before it's too late. And the hackers steal your identity or tap into your credit or debit card. You don't want that. I promise you that is a hassle to deal with. So get started today. Chatsportsaura.com slash chatsports. What about adding a veteran linebacker to this inside linebacker room? Anthony Barr of the Minnesota Vikings. Anthony Barr coming into the NFL he was an edge rusher, but he's transitioned into an inside linebacker role. 
He's a veteran, and he's also a multiple type of player. That's why I think he would fit so well in a Wink Martindale system. Not only could he be the guy that plays alongside Tay Crowder and Blake Martinez, or if one of them get injured, he could be that guy. But he also offers some pass rush ability. Last year in just 11 games, he had two and a half sacks. He also had 72 tackles. He had three tackles for loss and three interceptions. I'm a big fan of Anthony Barr. I like what he could do on the football field. And the thing is, throughout his NFL career, has been, he's been able to get after the quarterback. He has 17 and a half sacks in his NFL career. So not only is he a guy that would just be a guy that would play next to Blake Martinez and Tay Crowder in the middle of the field, he'd be able to offer some edge rushing ability. But when you look at this inside linebacker depth chart, Blake Martinez, no doubt a starter. Tay Crowder, Mr. Irrelevant. Is he ready to be a full-time starter? I think I like him more as a backup role and a plug-and-play guy when people get hurt. Then you got a lot of young players. Carter Coughlin, who was an edge rusher that switched to inside linebacker. Darian Beavers, the rookie, the six-round pick. Micah McFadden. I have high expectations for those guys. And then you have Cam Brown, who was a special teams player. But sometimes you just need veterans on the defense. The only veteran in that group was Blake Martinez. And who knows what he's going to be this year. He's still wearing that red non-contact jersey at practice, coming off of that ACL injury that he suffered in the early part of the 2021 NFL season. So who knows if he'll be ready or be able to get back to the player we saw him be for the Giants in his first season coming over for the Green Bay Packers. But what about this? I'll ask you guys this question. What's your confidence level in the Giants linebacker? Scale it from 1 to 10 for me. 1 being you're, co you're not confident, you're scared, they need to go out and sign Anthony Barr right now. 10 being, look, I am not concerned, this is a good group, let me know, scale it from 1 to 10. I definitely said that backwards, by the way. 1 being, you're not concerned, 10 being, you're very concerned. A lot of stuff going on, I screwed that one up. But look, one thing I'm not going to screw up is our Giants Now channel and our way to 10 thousand subscribers if you love the giants and you want free daily videos on the latest giants news and rumors go down right now hit that big red button and maybe you can be the lucky 10,000 subscriber here on giants now we know that the giants cornerback room is one that needs a lot of work it has a lot of players that are unproven so what about signing a guy that's 27 years old six foot three ran a 4 4 40 at the nfl combine and kevin king he's had some injury issues in the past but I like what he does as a football player. As we said, six foot three, four four forty, has really long arms. He likes to play that press man type of defense as a defensive back. When you look at what he's done in his NFL career, he's played 51 games total, and he has 30 pass breakups, seven interceptions, has allowed a completion percentage of 61, which is really good for a cornerback, and has only allowed 10 touchdowns in 51 games. And I think he would fit right in with this current Giants cornerback depth chart. You're not signing a guy right now this late in the offseason to be a cornerback starter right away. But could he be the third corner on the outside next to a Dory Jackson and Aaron Robinson? Because I like Radarius Williams, but I'm not sure. I like Maurice Kennedy, but I'm not sure about him. I like Michael Jaquette, but is he ready? None of those guys have proven anywhere in the NFL that they can be starters. Kevin King has done that with the Packers for the past couple of years. I know he got toasted in the 2020 NFL playoffs, but he's a solid player, and I think he fits the scheme that Wink Martindale wants to run. So we'll run through the four free agency targets that I brought up on today's show, and then I'll ask you guys, one maybe or somebody else, you would want to sign. Emmanuel Sanders, he's probably the number one guy that I would go out and sign if I'm the Giants. I like him. I think he'd fit, and it'd fit the biggest position to need. Trey Flowers, I think would fit on this defense, as well as Anthony Barr and Kevin King. Any of these guys get signed by the Giants, I'd be happy about it. But we'll end today's segment with this question. Name a player you want the Giants to sign. Doesn't, be, doesn't have to be one of the guys that I brought up. Stump me. Bring someone else up. Let me know a player you want the Giants to sign. All righty, I'll give shout-outs to everybody that gets an answer in. I appreciate you. Yeah, 1 to 10, 1 being you're not concerned, 10 you're very concerned. I'm going to be honest. I don't know I, uh, I don't know what happened right there. That was, that was embarrassing. Not enough. Not enough drinks. It's only 3.40. I'm probably going to get another one after the show. <laughs> Got to talk about Kai Soto on the Knicks after this. Antone says Kevin King is the effing guy we need ASAP. 
Tommy four one Tommy says Giants will go from worst to first to z to knee. I don't know what that means. James Hollister says to be honest, they all want to play for contenders. I can understand that, James. Yeah, look, if they're not going to get a contract and we get into July and August, maybe then we can go out and sign one of those guys. Yeah, beggars can't be choosers. Go get that million dollars that Joe Shane and the Giants are offering you. Mr. NY Stadium says we need to sign more defense. I agree with that, but I also think we may need to go out and sign a receiver. A lot of injury concerns in that unit. And look, the Giants' offense the past couple of years has been... <clears throat> So we need to improve that unit. We got another mailbag to get to on today's show. If I didn't get your question in the first mailbag, don't fret. Get in the comment section right now and use hashtag Giants. Um, let me see. No, it was... Uh, I don't remember. I don't know. Yeah. It's all right. Look, if you haven't yet, go get your questions in the comment section. Hashtag Giants or Super Chat. Someone be the MVP of today's show in Super Chat so I can tell my bosses, yo, people are paying me to talk about Giants football. Maybe we'll be able to do some more Giants videos. All righty. Let's wrap up today's show with the Giants rumors mailbag. What's going on, guys? Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. We're about to get into a mailbag where I answered your questions live from our live show on Wednesdays, every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. So subscribe. Go down right now. Hit that big red button. Turn on your notifications and help Giants Now get to 10,000 subscribers. First one coming in from Jessica Lampert. Where do you think Wandale and KT will be on the receiver chart by the end of the season? I think they have every opportunity, especially Kadarius Toney, to be the number one wide receiver for the New York Giants. We got a small sample of what Kadarius Toney can be in the NFL. Ten grabs for 198 yards, or 89 yards, nearly 200 yards against the Dallas Cowboys with Mike Neck Glennon throwing him the football. Kadarius Toney has everything you want in a wide receiver these days. Wandale Robinson... I'm not sure. I think he has a chance to be productive as a rookie, but I don't want to set the bar too high for him. But I do have big expectations for him. And I think both these players are going to have good years this year. But to give you a number, I think Kadarius Toney could be wide receiver one. And I also think Wandale Robinson could be wide receiver three or four. I think those are realistic expectations. The Hammy, what's up, man? Out of the star wide receivers, who do you think will be ready for week one with all the injuries? I'm hoping they're all ready. I need Kadarius Toney. Kenny Galladay, and Sterling Shepard out there in week one. Although, I'm not sure if Sterling Shepard's going to be ready for week one. He just started jogging a couple of weeks ago, so I'm not really sure if he'll be ready for week one. But if I can get Kadarius Toney, Kenny Galladay out there year, uh, week one to go along, Wandale Robinson, and Daniel Bellinger, the rookie tight end, I think the Giants would be sitting in good shape. Hopefully Shepard's ready to go. Maybe not. Maybe that's why you go out and sign another receiver. But great question, Hammy. DeAndre J, what are your thoughts on Tiki Barber? He seems like a, hate a hater, was a great player, though. He was. Tiki Barber is one of the best Giants of all time. The way he ended his career with the Giants in the last five seasons is honestly incredible. Five straight seasons of more than 1,200 rushing yards. Look, these stats are incredible. 11 touchdowns, 2 touchdowns, 13, 9, 5. But you know what happened in 2007, the first year of Tiki Barber's retirement? The Giants went and won a Super Bowl. And there was definitely some clashing between Eli Manning and Tiki Barber. And I wasn't a fan of the way Tiki Barber talked about Eli Manning in the media. How he talked about the Giants. How he talked about Tom Coughlin. I loved him as a player. I hated him as an analyst. And honestly, the words he spoke did more damage to my heart or good things to my heart than his playing did. Honestly, I don't like Tiki Barber. The way he speaks about the Giants and Eli Manning, that rubbed me the wrong way. But I'll leave it up to you in the comment section. What are your thoughts on Tiki Barber? We can all agree, one of the best Giants running backs of all time. But he has been a hater and had some choice words for this organization. So sound off in the comment section and let me know your thoughts on Tiki Barber. I'll be down there reading them and replying to all of you guys. If you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? Like, seriously, what are you waiting for? Go down right now, hit that big red button. Daily videos on the latest Giants news and rumors. 
It's June, and we're still putting out a video every single day on this channel. That's a shout out to the people I work with, Matthew Peterson, my producer, and my, jo my job for giving me an opportunity to do that. But we won't continue to be able to do that if we don't get to 10,000 subscribers as soon as possible. So if you haven't yet, go down right now, hit that big red button. Antone, what up, guy? Do you think Danny Bellinger is going to do everything we wanted Evan Ingram to do for us? Um, no, I honestly don't. I don't think they're even remotely same, the same type of players. I think Daniel Bellinger is a true tight end. He'll get his hands dirty. He can block. But he's nowhere near the athlete or the receiving threat that Evan Ingram is. Yeah, I think he has better hands than Evan Ingram. I mean, I know my, my producer, Matthew Peterson, has better hands than drop boy Evan Ingram. But I don't want to set the bar for Daniel Bellinger too high. Is it awesome that he's already starting and getting first-team reps with the Giants at minicamp and OTAs? Yes. But let's not expect this guy to come in and be the next Travis Kelsey or next George Kittle or anything like that. I think he can be a solid football player, but I don't want you guys to go out there thinking this is someone that's going to be the next Jeremy Shockey. Alzo, my guy, what up, bro? Should the Pro Bowl switch to a flag football ex exhibition I have a QB I'd vote for. Look, the Pro Bowl is a joke. Alzo, you're my guy. I appreciate it. I, I think it'd be pretty cool if the NFL players at the Pro Bowl played flag. I mean, they got to do something. I don't enjoy watching the Pro Bowl at all. It's not real football. I actually like watching them play dodgeball and do all the other stuff that they do at that weekend. Flag football, I think, would be cool. But I just think so many players in the NFL without guaranteed contracts are scared of these non-contact injuries. Which I understand. I wouldn't want to blow the chance at making millions of dollars. But look, if Kadarius Tony makes the Pro Bowl this year and he needs a QB to sling him some dimes, Alzo, make sure to hit up that guy. Corey W., what's up, man? How do you see the Giants using Kadarius Tony? This is a great question. I expect Kadarius Tony to be used in a multitude of ways. I think he's probably pre predominantly going to be used in the slot, but I also think he's going to get reps at the outside spot, at the wide receiver spot. They're going to use him on screens, on, on jet sweeps, handoffs, pitch plays. He might throw a couple passes like he did last year, but don't be surprised if you see Kadarius Tony in the backfield with Daniel Jones. I think that's a wrinkle that Mike Kafka is going to bring over. We saw that with Tyreek Hill in the past. We saw that with a lot of receivers, Miko Hardman as well as Kansas City. The thing about this offense, people are going to be used in positions all over the football field. I think that's greatly going to benefit a guy like Kadarius Toney, who's extremely valuable, extremely versatile, versatile, and one of the best players in the NFL when it comes to having the football in his hands and creating yards after the catch. What about this, though? Which Giants wide receiver do you think is going to have more touchdowns in 2022? Is it going to be Kadarius Toney or is it going to be Kenny Galladay? Look, I hope they both go for more than six, seven touchdowns this year after they didn't score a touchdown last year. But type their jersey number of who you think is going to score more TDs in 2022. PSY guy, Bree, what's up, man? Are you ex as excited as me to see Dane, Dane, Bel Dane Belton running around on defense? Yes, the rookie safety out of Iowa. I'm a big fan of Dane Belton. In the first day of Giants minicamp, he had two sacks. Wink Martindale brought the heat on day one of Giants minicamp. And Dane Belton's going to be a guy that's going to be that third safety. He's going to play a little bit of that big nickel corner spot. He's going to come down into the box and be another linebacker on the field. He's big, he's fast, he's strong, and he could do it all on the defensive end. I'm excited for him. I think he's a person that Giants fans aren't talking enough about because what he can do on the football field is not really replicated by anyone on this roster except maybe Xavier McKinney, who's one of the best safeties in the NFL. If you haven't yet, give us a follow over on Rumble, rumble.com slash TV. We have 2.2 thousand subscribers or followers over on Rumble. Help us get to 3K because we offer free daily videos. All the videos that are posted here are also posted over there, but they're also a little bit more edgy and they're not censored over there. So if you want more edgy, uncensored Giants content, go follow us, rumble.com slash TV. Class Clown, my guy. I don't know if I am being too optimistic, but I think there's a good chance we can go 10 and 7 this year. What do you think? In my Giants record prediction video, I had the Giants going 9 and 7. And I think that was fair. Uh 9 9 and 8, 9 and 8, excuse me. Thank you, Pete. I always forget that the Giants 
ha- or the NFL has switched to a 17 game schedule. I had the Giants going nine and eight because look, the Giants right now, based on 2022 win per- uh, win totals and projections in Vegas, have the easiest schedule in the NFL. The Giants have a lot of winnable games on this schedule. You can beat a team like the Carolina Panthers. You can beat the Chicago Bears. You can beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. You can beat the Seahawks. You can beat the Texans. You can beat the Lions. You can beat the Commanders. You can beat the Eagles. It's going to be tough to beat the Colts and Vikings, but maybe if you split with one of them, look, I think best case scenario, the Giants could go 10-7. and seven. But I think 9-8 and eight and 8-9 eight and nine is more of the sweet spot of where I would like them to be. And look, Giants go 9-8, and 8-9 eight, eight and nine this year. That is a hell of a first year for Joe Shane and Brian Dable. You could take that to the bank. Pete, 365, with the Giants not having a lot of proven talent at tight end, could they look to sign Rob Gronkowski? All right, we're getting wild on this mailbag. Cheers to that. Let me get a little sip going. Rob Gronkowski. He's not playing anywhere in the NFL unless Tom Brady's throwing him the football. I would love to see Rob Gronkowski in New York Giants blue. My opinion, the best tight end to ever play football. I know we like Bavaro here on this channel. But what Rob Gronkowski has done in his NFL career, there was games and plays where he was just unstoppable. This is one of the best postseason players of all time. And I get the question because when you look at this Giants tight end depth chart, not a lot of proven guys. Ricky Seals-Jones... Hasn't done a lot in his NFL career. Daniel Bellinger, he's a rookie. Jordan Akins, hasn't done that much. Chris Miriak is Chris Miriak. Look, I think the Giants could benefit from going out and signing another tight end, but it being Rob Gronkowski just isn't that realistic of an option. I think he's either going to play with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers this year or he's going to hang it up and wait five years to go on and put that gold jacket in. Gold jacket, excuse me, in Canton, Ohio. I love Rob Gronkowski. I hate the Patriots, but I've always admired how hard that dude plays because he is an absolute grooting grinder. I'm not even sure if you can say that anymore, but he is. He's a GG for sure. What about this, though? More TDs, and we'll end the show with this question. Make sure to get your votes in. More touchdowns. Which Giants tight end? Type RS for Ricky Seals-Jones or go down and type DB for the rookie, Daniel Bellinger. All righty, let's get some shout-outs. Everyone that uh, gets your votes in. I'd love for Rob Gronkowski to be a part of the Giants. I always wish he'd be a part of the Giants. I thought he would fit what we do here. But it just, it, it just, it's, it's, it's not going to happen. Just to be honest with you, it ain't going to happen. I got DB, 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 DB. We got four DBs in the chat. And also, we got a lot of 89s over 19. Alzo. My guy is going with Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay has more touchdowns than Kadarius Tony this year. I'd be pumped up about that. Before we sign off on today's show, if you haven't yet, make sure to give me a follow over on Twitter. We'll leave this up for one minute. I'll get my shot clock out. Anyone that gives me a follow over on Twitter in the next minute, I'll make sure to give you a follow back. Clock has started. I'll give you a shout out and I'll follow you back. We got some sex bots in the chat. Spam B to get the sex bots out of the chat. Fred, type your B. Let's ride. Alzo, I appreciate you, bro. I loved your question about the flag football. That was awesome, man. Anybody that follows me on Twitter, the link is in the chat. Just follow it. I'll give you a follow back. I'll also give you a shout out on the show. Let me see if there's any comments I want to respond to. Then we can get up out of here. Drop boy Evan Ingram. Yeah, Antone, that's that's my name for him. James Hollister says Tiki Sour. He wasn't a part of the Super Bowl teams, 100%. Harlem Girl says Tiki is a clown. Mike Francis, my guy, what up, bro? He says he was great, but I can't mess with him. Ag- agreed. What he said, the stuff, he's a hater, bro. He's just a hater. All right. Shot clock's up. If you haven't followed me on Twitter yet, maybe you already follow me. I'll put it in the link one more time, and then I'll see if anyone gave me a follow. And then, Jamie, shout out to you. Let me, is that a new chat I'm missing? Jamie, I got to follow. Jamie, I don't follow you on Twitter, I think. Send me a DM or mention me right now, Jamie, and I'll make sure to follow you back because you always like and retweet my stuff. But let me see. Jamie. Just followed you back. Let's ride. Shout out to you, Jamie. 
All righty, that looks like it's it. Just Jamie gave me a follow. I guess no one really cares about me. I'm just kidding. I'll see you guys soon, though. Let's go Giants.